I'm very mindful about each word that goes into my songs. Um, it's not just like a, a word that just rhymes with another word, you know, it's not there. Every word has a has a reason, you know, for its place in, in my music. And it talks a lot about my life experiences. So uh, like, for example, I have a song, um, Girl Without a Home. And every time I would sing that song, I would always cry. And to this day, sometimes, depending on the situation, I'll cry because uh, it, it talks about the struggle in the music industry and going to LA and not making it there and then having to come back home and face the embarrassment, you know, and stuff like that. that pain that you have, you know, uh, thinking, oh my gosh, I've failed, you know, and stuff. Uh, it's just pure emotion that comes out. So when you're talking about personal situations and stuff, like bringing me down, you know, it's just about like a, an abusive, uh, you know, relationship and stuff. You just have raw emotion when you're talking about something so personal. I, I think there's there's places for all kind of music. Like some music is to make you happy. Other music is to just kind of, you know, have feel good music. Other, other music is to, you know, just sit and feel sad about or whatnot. And there's other music that's inspiring and stuff. So depending on what, what I write about, I like to think that the emotion is really raw and pure. Well, what went on in making Yoza was, uh, it's very interesting. Like I was saying, I have a very uh, kind of interesting uh, past. I suffered from trichotillomania when I was eight years old. And so I looked like I had a lobotomy. <laughs> like I had no hair for all around here. And uh, so at a young age, I experienced a lot of like isolation, a lot of embarrassment, humiliation and stuff like that. And uh, not, not only that, but I had really bad teeth. And so um, they had to remove like seven teeth and then they put a headgear that went around my head. And so um, through, for a young age, I really suffered a lot of uh, you know insecurity and all that kind of stuff, but I played music and that was the one thing that kept me alive. Like that really quite literally kept me alive was playing music because I felt like that was something that that could make me acceptable you know later on in life i discovered you know substances that made me really forget about all that pain and stuff and then i went down that road with uh, arrests and overdoses and alcohol poisoning and all that kind of stuff and uh, that went on for a hot minute and then i found recovery I, the, the people that are in my life, I'm not someone that has many people that I'm just super close with and, and someone that flocks with and has an entourage wherever they go. I actually have a very select people that I feel very comfortable with. And uh, it's so funny because when I was going through one of the most like hardest times in my life, I don't know why, but you called me and we had this long conversation and uh, you were like one of the only people that I ever really talked to during that time. And uh, it, was, it was a really trying time for me. And um, I don't know why, but you just kind of like reached out and do you remember that? And, uh, and we were talking about God and talking about all kind of stuff. And this is, you know, an ukulele company that sponsors me and I'm not even talking to people that I've known for like 20 years or my mom or anyone. I'm talking to you. I think that's what family is. It's not necessary. It's not blood. It's not, you know, it's, it's the people who are there who truly know you and the people that you feel you can be your truest self with, you know? I never thought that I could play and I was told that I couldn't sing at a young age and, um, once I stopped caring about that and I'm just doing it because I love music, I don't know, it, it would, it's just the most amazingly great feeling in the world, better than any drug that I've ever done, <laughs> when you know that there's, there are people you know, that are actually listening to you and they care about what you're singing about and how you sing it and you created it. It's something so special that not very many artists get to experience uh, 
just sit, the people are spending their time that they could be doing anything else, and time is very, very valuable. And they're sitting there listening to you tell your story in your own way, and they appreciate it. You know, it's just something else. I, it's just, uh, I don't think there's any other feeling in the whole world that would feel that good. And I think that's also where I found the self love too, because. It you know all of us struggle with our our own self image, but this is just you know me. So it's it's who I where I can be my truest self. That's what I think. I think I can be. Yeah.